So, okay, welcome to this next video in the theory of probability. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is do some actual calculations of covariance. We're going to calculate the covariance of a uh, multinomial distribution, basically. So, uh, let's say that we have some vector x, uh, which is multinomially distributed, k, uh, and then m with a vector p, a probability vector p. So remember what this means. Oh dear, you can't even see that. Um, forget, uh, ignore what's above. And this is the important thing that I've written here. Okay, uh, so um, so uh, this means, remember, that we have uh, some baskets intuitively. We have basket x1 uh, all the way through to basket xk. And uh, we have n tennis balls, so here are the tennis balls, and we are putting them into the baskets. Uh, and the probability of it going in basket 1 is p1, through to uh, the probability of it going in basket k is pk. The sum of all those probabilities is, ov is obviously 1, and that's the problem. The problem is then to find the prob probability that this vector x is equal to some specific vector x1, x2, uh, etc., xk. Uh, and basically, uh, we know that that is given by the probability mass function, which is uh, the sum i is equal to uh, 1, well, first you have m factorial at the front, i is equal to 1 to k of, uh, what is it, pi to the power of xi all over xi factorial, basically, and you product that all up and uh, multiply it all together. And basically, what we have is a probability, is we have this... Um, probability space, which is every possible outcome of ascribing these balls, uh, in these n balls, into these baskets. So, for instance, we have the outcome that you put all n balls in basket 1 and no balls in any of the other baskets. Uh, those are all outcomes, and we can ascribe random variables to this. We can think of this as being made up of lots of random variables. x1, which ascribes you the number of balls uh, in basket 1, so it's between 0 and n, potentially in this case it would be n, and we can go all the way through to xk. Uh, we have lots of random variables in between here, x2, x3, etc, which describes you the number of balls in basket k. Okay, so what we can ask is what is the covariance of these two random variables, let's say x1 and x2, uh, or we could just ask generally uh, what is the covariance of random variable xi with xj, but then all we'll do uh, is to generalise it, we'll just uh, in the end, at the end, change wherever we see this subscript 1, we'll change that to i. And wherever we see the subscript 2, we'll check it to j, change it to j and make sure that that is valid. Okay, so the covariance of x1 and x2 is our problem. W what we're trying to find is the covariance of these two random variables, x1 and x2. And basically, the easiest way to do this is by using the fact that the variance of the sum of those two, x1 plus x2, is equal to the covariance of x1 uh, plus x2 with x1 plus x2. So if you consider another random variable, x1 plus x2, which is the random variable where you consider the basket 1 and basket 2 as being a super basket, and you consider them just as a single basket. So if you join x, uh, the basket x1 with the basket x2, so basket 1 with basket 2, and you consider that a super basket, this random variable is telling you how many balls are in that super basket. Uh, if, if we want the covariant, if we want the variance of that, um, of that random variable, then it's equal to the covariance of that random variable with itself. And we can expand this out to the covariance of x1 with itself, plus 2 times the covariance of x1 with x2, plus the covariance of x2 with itself. Okay? Uh, but this is just equal to the variance of x1 uh, with its... Uh, the variance of x1, sorry plus 2 times the covariance of x1 with x2, which is what we want, uh, plus um, the variance of x2, basically, here. Okay? Uh, right. Uh, now, this is actually very easy now, because what we have is that the covariance of x1, uh, x2, is just equal to the variance of x1 plus x2, minus the variance of x1, minus the variance of x2, and all of that divided by 
2 basically so all of that divided by 2 so just take those two off to the other side and divide by 2 to get the covariance okay but the variance of x1 and the variance of x2 are very easy to construct because we know how x1 and x2 are distributed we've seen in previous videos that if you just want this random variable x1 you can consider the ball going into any any basket apart from x1 as being a failure and the ball going into basket 1 as being success. So we know that x1 is binomially distributed uh, with number of trials n and probability of success p1. So we know that the variance of x1 is therefore equal to, so I'll put that down here, variance of x1 is therefore equal to the variance of binomial distribution, which is np uh, q, basically. So p is p1 and q is 1 minus p1. So we'll just write that there. And similarly, x2 is exactly the same. It's binomially distributed at n, p2, basically, this time. So again, its variance, the variance of x2, is equal to uh, n, p2, 1 minus p2. And similarly, this random variable x1 plus x2 is basically just this random variable where you consider x1, the basket 1 plus basket 2, to be this super basket. Now you consider that as uh, being success and it not going in the super basket, i.e. it going in basket 3, basket 4, basket 5, up to basket k. You consider all of those as failure. So the x1 plus x2 is going to be binomially distributed, again with n trials, and the probability of success is now p1 plus p2, which is the probability that you going to the super basket. So the variance of x1 plus x2 is given by n uh, p1 plus p2 uh, times 1 minus p1 minus p2, basically. So now, stick all of that together and see what we get, basically, is how we take the covariance of these two random variables. The covariance of x1 and x2, it's now just algebra, so we get n times p1 plus p2 times 1 minus p1 minus p2 minus uh, variance of x1 is n p1 times 1 minus p1 and the variance of x2 is equal to minus n uh, p2 times 1 minus p2 okay and we'll have to divide all of that by 2 so I won't stick that in in fact I'll put it out the front here we'll have a uh, times by a half out the front there, because um, otherwise we'll run out of paper, basically. Uh, so then we'll have a half, right. So multiply everything out, basically, now. Uh, we, if we multiply this out, we get uh, n times p1. So from this one multiplied by this one, we get n p1. Then we'll get p1, uh, we'll get minus p1 squared, so we'll get minus n p1 squared. Then we'll get uh, p1 times p2, we'll get minus n p1 p2. Uh, right, okay. Um, then what we'll do is n times p2 times 1, so we'll get plus n p2. Then we'll get n p2 minus p1, so we'll get minus n p1 p2. Then we'll get n p2 p2, so we'll get minus n p2 squared. From here, we'll get a minus n p1. Then we'll get a plus n p1 squared. From here, we'll get a minus n p2 and we'll get a plus mp2 squared, basically. Okay, so if we uh, put all of that together, a lot of things cancel, so let me show you what cancels. Okay, so if I bring this right up. So mp1 here, squared, cancels with this one here, so those two cancel. mp1 um, at the front cancels with the negative mp1 over here. Uh, mp2 here plus mp2 cancels with the negative mp2 here and the negative mp2 squared cancels with the plus mp2 squared there. So you're left with just, uh, e this is equal to a half times negative 2 np1 p2. So overall we get that the covariance is negative np1 times p2 and if you want to generalize that it will just be npi pj basically so if you want the covariance of xi with xj it will be a negative npi pj okay uh, and you can verify that all of these steps work for the arbitrary case um, 
So what's this telling us? Firstly, it's telling us that this is always a negative number. So uh, they're, cor they're negatively correlated, which is what we would expect. Because if you have more balls in basket one, you expect that, that that will cause you to have less balls in basket two, because you've got a finite number of balls to disperse among the baskets. So if more are in basket one, that's going to leave less in basket two. So this uh, result makes sense.